Great honor to be here. Great honor to represent um, my university in Malawi and the College of, Ma of Medicine in Malawi. I'm a user, so I'm not one of you, an innovator, and I'm not a designer, but I'm the person who wants to use these things. And therefore, I'm going to speak a little bit from that angle. I've, we're supposed to say a little bit about ourselves. I've been in Malawi since 1974, and I'm a pediatrician and have worked in the government service for 39 of those years. Our hospitals, our public hospitals, are full of equipment that doesn't work. Expensive equipment, which is now uh, housed in the uh, med medico-electric department, and when you go down there, it's rather sad. It's like looking at a mortuary of devices. And it's clear that we need something, particularly for looking after our patients in hospital. And so what are we as users looking for? And we're really looking for something that's very easy to use. It has to be safe. It has to be robust, reliable. It has to be repairable. And many of the things we are sent, expensive pieces of equipment, cannot be repaired by us. <clears throat> it has to be inexpensive. Ideally, it should be portable. We should be able to clean it. We need to have available parts, and very often that is not so. We need to have comprehensible manuals. Very often we have manuals in languages that we don't understand. We need to be able to quickly assemble it, and we need to be able to easily store it away. And I'm saying all this really so that you see where we're coming from when we're looking at certain bits of equipment. And when I say easy to use, we really need something with very clear markings on it so that people can easily put the right switch on or off. Where tubes should go. I've seen some very dangerous things done because things are not properly marked, devices are not properly marked. And really symbols in many ways are better than language. And then we need directions, ideally actually on the device itself, because if you have it on a separate manual, it will be lost. And there shouldn't be too many things that can go wrong, so there should be as few connections as possible. By inexpensive, I don't mean a sort of second grade thing. We want to use the principles of high-tech equipment and apply them to low-cost robust systems. And I think that can be done. I do think medical equipment is grossly overcharged and overpriced. <clears throat> Many years ago, we started with the Blanta hot cot. Uh, we had incubators that uh, were very nice. They cost anything up to $30,000 and something would go wrong on them, often the thermostat, because our power surges. And without a thermostat, you're either cooking that baby or you are freezing that baby. And here we had something. This is a design I actually took from a technical school in Tanzania. And for $150, we can keep a baby warm, observed, and uh, we use this in our neonatal unit, and in, indeed in many units in, in the country. And just two days ago, somebody from Cameroon asked for the designs. I'm sorry that you can't see the technical design, but there's a technical design on this side, but it hasn't come out, I think, because it's done on a Mac. This is our uh, low-cost bubble continuous positive air uh, airway pressure machine. This is what helps particularly a premature baby to keep breathing. Premature babies get very tired breathing and if they stop breathing obviously they die. Malawi actually has the highest premature maturity level in the world, 18%. But as you know, it's the neonates that really we haven't kept up with 
trying to improve their care in the way that we have with some of the other under fives. And so we validated this machine. It started off in a shoebox. And it's such a nice, simple design. It's got two aquarium pumps in it, because those are made to give low pressure, continuous uh, help. And this is now, um, well, instead of being, I think the cheapest bubble CPAP is probably about 3,000 on the commercial market. This one is now available at 800. It was designed and uh, developed with Rice University in Houston, with uh, ourselves, and with Andy, for which we're very grateful. <clears throat> We've, uh, we got a large grant, a slab grant, saving lives at birth, and we've now put uh, a Pumani, Pumani means breathe in Chichewa, from Malawi, in uh, every district hospital, depending on their size and how many babies they have uh, born there annually. And it goes in, there's training going on, mentorship going on, and looking at how robust the machine is, and the machine has proved to be very robust. And you can see there that they get uh, not only a C, uh, CPAP machines, but they get an uh, oxygen concentrator suction machine and also uh, a glucometer and SATS machine. The other thing we've been involved with is phototherapy lights. If a baby, uh, because of prematurity or one or two other problems, is allowed to get jaundiced, uh, that bilirubin the unconjugated can cross into the brain and that child can be permanently damaged. And it's a bit of UV light is required to prevent that. The machines that you can get commercially are usually about $1,800 or so. It's very difficult to get the bulbs to replace them and so we've been making our own. And this machine, which is sitting on top of a, a Blantyre hot cot, is uh, made locally. It's made next door in the, in the Polytech, and we have two of our engineers here who just yesterday or the day before delivered 15 of these machines for us to be putting into the district hospitals. And these are being made, I think I'm right in saying, at about $80 per. And these are made with LED lights, which have a a shelf, uh, they have a life, working life, of 50,000 hours. So there's something that you can give and be sure that they'll be reliable for some time. Sorry, that was a lovely picture of Rodwell, Rodwell Bacolo. He is the engineer who actually made these and modified the design to make it effective. And this has all been funded by Andy. So what have been enablers? We've been asked to look at enablers and to be, look at some of the challenges. And certainly to have some startup funds is extremely useful because without that it's very difficult to get going. I do think international collaboration is helpful. But right from the start, I think you have to say this is an equal partnership. And ownership, in my view, should belong to the country in which this is being done. And in our, in our sense, that's Malawi. You need local collaboration between clinicians and uh, engineers. Until recently, I mean, I've lived beside the Polytech for years and years and really had hardly been in there. And it's only more recently, and I have to say, since Andy and Rice and all these collaborative things, that we've been working together. And I think that's incredibly important because the engineers don't always understand our problems and we don't understand theirs. We get their students. The engineers want their students to do very, very clever things. We want them to do very simple things. So there's a sort of slight tension, which is good. How do you get this advocated? I mean, we're clinicians and possibly engineers. We're not, we're not very good at advocacy. And perhaps entering into an international competition is one way of getting something known. And then I do think you need a clinical forum 
in which you can use whatever you are convinced is going to help. Um, I am fortunate to be in a department where I have wonderfully willing uh, colleagues who are, you know, if it's good for a baby, we'll try it. And I think that that's the sort of environment we have to work in. <clears throat> Challenges for Malawi. Malawi is landlocked, and so everything has to be imported to make something. And that means the price is up, uh, the actual difficulty of getting it. You can't often handle it before you actually buy it, and that's difficult. Our own institutions, red tape, have made actually accessing the very funds that we've been given sometimes extremely difficult to get. And I think within our own institutions, we have to make it, um, they have to enable the sort of innovation that their uh, collegiate are doing. Finding a local manufacturer, we have found that extremely difficult. And I was talking again to the engineers the other day and saying, local manufacturer, who can make these things for us? And for us, it's quite hard to find somebody. And I'm just wondering whether there shouldn't be a social arm to some of our uh, developers, some of the um, large companies who make these things. Couldn't they uh, mother a company uh, in a smaller country where, uh, as part of their sort of uh, social responsibility. And then there is that difficulty. Entrepreneurs want to make money, and we don't want to pay. So somehow we've got to get something where we've got something that, uh, a, that we can use and we can afford as clinicians, and yet somebody is able to make enough money to be able to survive. And so all of that can be a bit of a challenge, particularly right at the beginning. Just to remind you, this is your end user. And uh, most of what we've done has been with little babies. And bear in mind that he's small and easily hurt and easily infected, but he needs your help. <clears throat> 